Well, praise the Lord. Everybody stand in the room tonight. Turn around and greet your neighbor and tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Join with me and let's sing together. At last and did my Savior believe and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for such a standing if you would. It's good to be in God's house. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 If Brother Jimmy will bring her buckets, we'll receive her offering at this time. Hope everybody's had a blessed day today. It's been a wonderful day. Amen. If you would just bow your heads and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to you tonight, Lord, and we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to be in your house. We ask God you come down in a mighty way tonight and just bless us tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful things that you give us each and every day. We ask God that you bless us in each and every way, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the many things. Lord, we ask that you open our minds to receive your word tonight, Lord. Let us use it for your kingdom. Lord, we know you're coming. You're coming soon. And, Lord, let us be ready. We ask God you bless us all for we're about to receive and use it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Bring your offerings. I am blessed. I will bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. And sing unto the King of Israel. I will bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. And not to
and amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated tonight. Let's sing this little chorus together. Oh, standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. He's the one who always cares and understands. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Come on, aren't you glad of that tonight? I was reading just today and um, or yesterday, and I was reading when Thomas was there with the Lord, and the Bible says that Thomas said, "Lord, I want to know that it's you, but the only way that I can know that it's you if you'll let me just touch those hands and those places in your side." that I may know that you are God. And, uh, boy, I'm glad that we can reach out and touch the Lord, aren't you? And we can know that he is real tonight. And maybe whatever that it is in your life, maybe whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing tonight, I just want to remind you that the Lord is standing there. He may feel like he's in the shadow, but you can reach out and touch him and feel the nail-scarred hands, the pierced side, and know that our Lord lives. Can you say amen? Let's stand and let's sing it all together one more time. Oh, standing somewhere in the shadows you'll find Jesus. He's the and worship him standing somewhere in the shadows you'll find Jesus he's the one who always cares and understands standing somewhere Let's give the Lord one more hymn to praise tonight. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I went today to the Holy Week service, the Ministerial Association sponsored.
Brother Artie Rivers ministered today, and he did a wonderful job. And uh, tomorrow, our very own uh, Pastor Colton will be ministering. And I hope that you'll be able to go and support tomorrow's service. It starts at 12.05, and uh, it's about 20 minutes long. It gets you back to your workplace uh, if you so need to go. Uh, they will be serving lunch tomorrow, though, as they have every day. And tomorrow, our ladies from our church is going to be uh, taking care of that. And so uh, make sure that you're there. And if you should go tomorrow, uh, if you have your PTC sweatshirt or your PTC hoodie, wear that. And uh, let's uh, let them see that we are representing our church. Amen. And uh, we'll be loving on Pastor Colton tomorrow. And that's at the First Baptist Church downtown Savannah. Also Sunday at 10 o'clock, we'll be having our sunrise fellowship uh, in the lobby. And we'll be having... A light breakfast and refreshments and uh, juice and so come and be a part of that there'll be a photo booth set up for your Easter family photos and then there'll be service at 1030 no lifeline connection class and no evening worship Sunday resurrection Sunday can you believe we're Easter Sunday already 2024 and here we are on Easter Sunday it's so hard to believe we're just believing God's going to do some great and some mighty things. Amen? And so you be much in prayer. Let's pray that people will be saved. Let's pray that visitors will come and be with us. And most of all, let's pray that the Lord will be glorified as we honor Him and celebrate what He has done for us at Calvary's cross. Can you say amen? Invite someone, text someone, call someone, share it on social media. Uh, however you fit to do so, just make sure that you take some type of time uh, to invite somebody to Easter Sunday with you. All they can do is say yes or no or I'll think about it. Amen. Amen. They'll say yes or no or I'll think about it. Now, if they say they're going to pray about it, that's a no. All right? Don't bank on it. They say they're going to pray about it, that's a no. Amen. That's the Christian excuse of saying no. It's when you say, I'll think about it. Amen. We're thankful that you're here, all of our visitors. We're glad you're in the house tonight, and uh, we appreciate you being here. Open your Bible, if you will, please, to the book of Judges, chapter 7. Thank you, singers and musicians. Judges, chapter 7. I want to finish tonight uh, this study that we have been doing with Brother Gideon. I chased several rabbits last week, probably chased more than I should have, but uh, be that as it may, we got through that. Now we're going to chase a few more tonight. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 7, as we read in verse 15, Gideon heard them telling of the dream and the interpretation, and that he worshiped and returned to the host of Israel and said, Arise. Everybody say, Arise. For the Lord has delivered unto your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the 300 men into three companies, a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall you do. So he said, Do what I tell you to do. These are the instructions. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, speaking of the 300, I want you as the same to blow your trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say the sword of the Lord and Gideon. The sword of the Lord and Gideon. I want us to stop there tonight for just a moment. I want to share with you something that I believe is vital and important for the church today. Everything that we do in life, everything, whether it is for God or whether it is not for God, is a life of faith. Let me say that again. It is a life of faith. When you get in your car to turn the key over, you have faith it's going to crank. When you push the brake, you have faith it's going to come to a stop. Can you say amen? You have faith. Now, living for God is as well a life of faith. But I believe tonight as a church, as a whole, we are limiting our faith in God. Faith is the foundation 
of our Christian walk. Without it, the Bible says you cannot please God. Without faith, you cannot please God. God is not a God of sight. God is a God of heart. Let me say that again. God is not a God of sight. God is a God of heart. He is a God of faith. That's why the scripture also teaches us that we walk by what? And not by? We walk by faith and not by sight. When I read Gideon and I read this story, this is what I see. Everyone else had their faith in the dead God and serving the God of Baals. But Gideon lived his life, if you will, at this moment in faith in God, the Creator, and he knew that his God was real. He found him to be real when he laid his fleece before him, and twice God responded to him. We find at that moment, when we go back to the beginning of Genesis chapter number 1, God has never once tried to explain himself to us. The Bible says that in Genesis, he said, in the beginning, God. Are you follow me? In the beginning, God. So what I get to this in this area tonight is you have to learn how to take God by faith. You have to learn how to take God by heart. You cannot take God by sight. Again, a lot of people would rather go by sight, but God, again, doesn't deal with sight. Most will believe something if they can see it, but not often or not all the time do we see it with God. You just have to have faith to believe. I believe today that's why the world today is watching you and I as a believer. They're watching us to see, are we really going to walk by faith are we really going to believe this God in whom we have yet to see? Are we going to live this life of victory and be victorious as a Christian? Or what are we going to do? The world is watching you and I today. The world, at this moment, these men were watching Gideon to see what his God was going to do. I'm glad I serve the God of Gideon tonight. I'm glad I have a God that I can depend upon and I can trust upon. God's story, God's given story here again is faith, faith in Him. Again, everything you do in Christ is by faith. If you get stronger or you get weaker, it's by faith. If you get colder or you get hotter, it's by faith. Uh, let's, let's come to the house for just a moment here at PTC. This ministry in nine years, the almost nine years that I have been here, we have always been a faith-based ministry. We never knew when I came nine years ago almost where we would be today. But God has helped us as we have walked by faith and every step of the way God has led and look at where we are today through faith by God. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, the weak, the fearful, uh, the fainted heart, they, uh, they don't last very long at PTC. And I'm going somewhere, follow me. Because doubt can never see faith. Let me say that again. Maybe you want to note, note that down on something just to be a reminder to you. Doubt can never see faith. Doubt is the opposite of faith. When God gave Gideon these instructions and then Gideon gave the instructions to these 300 men. Again, I got to it last week. He divided them into 300 men into three companies, 100 men per company. This was symbolic, as I shared with you last week. The speaking of the divine trinity of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. With the power of God the Father, with the power of God the Son, with the power of God the Holy Ghost, and with His Spirit behind them, and the power that He had behind them, 
there was no doubt that these men would not succeed in winning this battle. In other words, there was no way with God, with the Son, and with the Holy Ghost that they could fail. I'm going somewhere. Follow me. I'm trying to tell you that as that applied to them then, that applies to you and I right now. If we are walking, Brother Kenneth, with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, with the three companies, and we are walking in the power and in the Spirit of God, and we have our faith placed in God, then there is no way as a believer that we can fail. Come on, somebody, stay with me. This applies not only to us personally, this applies to us collectively as a church. And I know many may say, well, I don't always see it happening. Well, think about this. The army of these, of these Midianites didn't see what was happening either. They were asleep. They had done rested, got to their place of rest for the night. But when Gideon put the trumpet in every hand and a pitcher in every hand and a lamp in every hand, God was working even when the enemy could not see it. Oh, my Lord. I'm trying to explain to you tonight that if God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, that you and I have, and I have it, he's within me, he's dwelling in me, he's dwelling among me, he is my Father, he is my King, he is my Savior, he is my Helper, he is my Deliverer, he is my Healer, he is my all and all tonight. And if I have him and he's working, then I cannot fail Amen. because God cannot fail. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God cannot fail. God cannot fail. I told you last week, one of the uh, symbolics that we find here again to the trumpet is the word of God. Remember, the trumpet was proclamation as they would shout in verse 18 that we read just a few moments ago. They would shout and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The sword of the Lord. Somebody say, the sword, the sword. of the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 and 12 that the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now that should be the proclamation of every Christian, of every believer. This is not just a proclamation for the preacher or the pastor or the evangelist because all of us in this room will face battles. We will face warfares and we can win it through the word of God. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Let me give you another scripture. Ephesians chapter 6. Remember when the apostle Paul told the Ephesians to take on the whole armor of God that you would be able to withstand in the evil day and when you've done all stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth having on the breastplate of righteousness your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all Above all, take the shield of what? Why do we take the shield of faith? Because faith is what pleases God. We live by faith. You can take everything else away and still have faith and still win the battle. Come on, somebody. Because faith pleases God. Then he said, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and the helmet of salvation. Here's the remainder of that. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So what Gideon's men was doing, these three companies and these 300 men, when they were shouting the sword of the Lord, they were shouting the word of God. They were shouting God. They were shouting of his spirit and these spiritual garments of war that we put on, dear friends. They're needed, and we must have them against the enemy. If we want to have a, a, a battle to win, yes, again, put on these things. But if you don't have faith and you don't have the sword of the spirit, the living, breathing word of almighty God, and if you don't have his spirit 
working and dwelling, then you're not going to win the battle no matter what kind of, of the things that you may put on you. I believe that the reason that the enemy and the enemy has been fighting and he will never stop to decease not to fight what's going on here in this church. If you're a part of this church and you believe in what God is doing here and you have faith to see God continue on, then the Lord is, the, the enemy is going to fight you and the enemy is going to come against you because you have faith to believe that God is going to do something in the supernatural way more than just in the natural. Can you say amen? And the reason that the enemy fights this church and this body of people is because we preach the word. I preached it Sunday night. We preach Christ and him crucified. And the devil doesn't like that. The enemy cannot stand that. Every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, we're waving the sword of the Lord. We're declaring the word of Almighty God. We are preaching, thus saith the Lord. And when we preach the word, it increases and strengthens our faith. Faith sees the word. And God had given Gideon a word and God has given this church a word and it's the holy word of God and we preach it and we teach it and we do what Gideon said for these men to do. We have risen up and we're rising up even now as we speak in faith and we are trusting God and he's going to do more in 24, more than we've ever seen. Can somebody say amen if you're with me? tonight we're working right now by faith somebody say amen. amen what do you mean we're working by faith we're believing by faith I keep going back to it but again I need some faith to believers to believe with me at this little building that we're building next to the church this new wing that's coming we're believing it can and will be paid for even before it's completed. Do I have any believers in the room tonight? You see, you don't see that happening yet. But faith teaches us to believe God right now that it will happen. We don't see. I'll give you another example. We don't see what is happening in jail ministry. We don't, we, we don't physically see that. But last Wednesday night, before six, or at 6 o'clock, before our service started, they baptized five men. By faith, we believe that what Brother Armando and Brother Kenneth and Brother Joey and all of these that are doing jail ministry, we believe by faith that what they're doing, they're reaching hearts and they're reaching lives and souls are being changed. We can't see it, but faith is happening. Hallelujah. We don't see what's happening in bus ministry. I shared that story Sunday morning with you of how that young man was in bus ministry and now he's the pastor of a church. You don't always see what's happening in bus ministry. But faith says that we're planting seeds. Faith says that we're helping in some child along the way will hear this gospel. He will respond to this gospel. He or she will get it into their heart and one day God will use them for his glory and his honor by faith. We are believing that. Somebody say amen. We may can't see it, but God is working. God is doing something. Doubt cannot see that, church. Let me say it again. Doubt cannot see that. Doubt can't support the work of God. Uh, again, doubt won't ever be able to stay in function at PTC because we are a church of faith tonight. It takes faith. Doubt can never take the gospel and move forward with it because the gospel has to go by faith in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that we're living in a time and an hour right now where if God could just simply find someone to believe him, that he could do a whole lot more than what he's even doing. Because God doesn't work with the possible. We know the things that are possible. God works in the impossible business. Come on, somebody. Sadly, we have people today, they wouldn't know God if he walked in the door and hit them in the head. Why? Because they're doubtful. 
They don't have faith. Doubt cannot see. Not only did these trumpets symbolic the word of God, but then again, as I shared last week, here was the empty pictures. You say, well, you ministered this last week. I know, but there's parts of this I don't want you to miss tonight. There's something valuable to this that we need to understand. There's empty pictures in the body of Christ right now. Those who lack trust, those who are working in their own flesh and self-will, God can't feel those. See, God not only wants to give us faith and help our faith to increase, but he wants to fill us with his spirit. Come on, somebody. And if we're an empty pitcher, we need to be filled with the spirit because if we don't get filled with the spirit, then that empty pitcher is going to get filled with something and if it's not the word of God, then it's the worldly sin. Are you still with me tonight? So we have something within us that needs to be filled. Now here we again, we find the apostle Paul exhorting once again to the body of Christ, the born again believers. In 2 Corinthians, he says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He said in Ephesians, he said, be ye filled with the Spirit. How about over in the book of Philippians chapter 2, Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself he made himself, I read this in the ESV version, he made of himself, meaning he emptied himself and took up him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. This is speaking of Christ. He emptied himself so that Christ, God the Father, could work in him through his spirit and use him. Even though he was totally God, he was still totally man which is who you and I are today. We're not God, we're man. Somebody say amen to that. So if we, if we have this same attitude as Paul is writing of Christ and who we ought to be, then we have to be willing to empty our picture of the things of the world so that the Spirit of God can come in and fill us with His Spirit. Somebody help me. See, you, you got to get to a place in your life that your own wills and your own desires and your own wants begin to cease. And you come to a place where you say, God, I want thy will to be done in my life. Again, we can go back. Here we are right now in the middle of the, the Easter celebration. We're, we're just about at that very moment where Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying. And he said, Lord, not my will but yours be done. Hello? Do we think that Christ wanted to go to the cross of Calvary? Probably not. Who wants to be crucified? Who wants nails in their hands and their feet, crown of thorns upon their head, beat with the cattails 39 times? Who wants the flesh literally ripped from their body? Nobody wants that, not even Jesus. But he said, Lord, not my will but yours be done. I wish somebody would help me preach it here. He said, I'm emptying myself and my flesh and who I am out to my Father because I want my Father to fill me and I want His glory and I want His power and I want His Spirit. I want to fill this hollow space in my life and let Christ come in that I may shine and that He may be glorified and that they may see Jesus Christ in this world I'm living in. Not just the unsaved, but the enemy as well. Let them see that I'm on the Lord's side. Let them see that the Lord's on my side. Come on, church. Then the third one we get to, this is where I left off. I just laid a foundation to get to this. We get to the third one. He said, here's a lamp that is given to you. Remember I said last week, according to the scripture, thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto my path. How many knows that the darker it is with Jesus Christ living in, in us, fulfilling himself within us, the brighter his light's going to shine in this world. Again, remember, you are the picture. You are the temple. You are the house. 
Remember what Matthew said? You are the light of the world. Jesus spoke this. Matthew wrote it. And he said, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but they put it on a candlestick so that all may see in the house. Somebody help me preach. And he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, if you'll allow me to for just a minute, let me, let me, let me tarry on something. Right now in our society, there's trouble on every hand. If you've been watching the news these last few days, we are seeing things, we are hearing of things. Prophets are prophesying, the word of God is being fulfilled. I believe if you're, if you're seeking God and you are in the spirit world at any point in time, you probably sense something in your spirit. Maybe even the Lord is showing you some things in your spirit that we are living in the last days. There is uncertainties all around us. And the world is, look, not just America, not just America, not just America, but the world is looking for answers and they can't find them. When I think about the time with Gideon and I think about Israel in this particular moment of Judges chapter 6 and 7, I think we can really say that we see the same. A time of uncertainty, even a time of impossibilities. (laughs) There's some things right now that it's going to have to be God to turn some things around in the world we're living in today because man with man it is impossible but in this moment here's what I love about this in this moment with Gideon hallelujah even in a time of uncertainty even in a time of impossibility it was the best time for God to move mightily Because all God needed, are you with me? Is one man to have faith, to believe, and to follow the instructions that he was given. That's what we need right now. We just need somebody right now with some faith to believe that God can do the impossibility. We just need somebody who will sound the trumpet, sound and blow the word of Almighty God, preach the word. We need somebody who will say, Lord, I will empty myself to the things of this world and I will be filled with thy spirit and thy word and I will be a light for you that all the world may see Jesus Christ. I'm not preaching to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and it's going to be easy. I'm not preaching to you tonight night to tell you that there won't be times of discouragement. I'm not preaching to you tonight and telling you there won't be times that the enemy won't bring to you fear and cause you to doubt. But I'm telling you that if you will keep the faith and you will believe God that you can arise for the victory has already been given. God has already won the battle. Jesus Christ has already been crucified, buried, and he is risen with victory in his hands. It's for the church. It's for the hour in which we're living here. Somebody just has to have the faith to follow and believe God. Somebody say amen. Somebody said, well, I'm scared to death. You don't think Gideon was scared to death? When God looked at him and said, I've got 32,000 men for you, but 32,000 is too big. And at the end of the day, all I'm going to give you is 300 men. You don't think Gideon was scared half to death? Come on, somebody. Gideon said, I looked across. They looked like grasshoppers that covered the old earth. There were so many Midianites around. Too many to, to, to go out and fight. But God said, we're not using 32,000. It's too many. We're not even using 2,000. It's too many. But God said, I'll give you 300, and that'll work just perfect. And Gideon's going, do what? Let me turn up my hearing aid. Do what? Come on, somebody. Do the natural eye. It can't be done. Gideon didn't have much of an education. He's just a farmer. Through education, it can't be done. (laughs) 
Gideon didn't have much money, but money can't get it done. Come on, somebody. Your ability, your job, it may be great, but it won't get it done. It can only be done through the Lord God Almighty and the Holy Ghost of God. Somebody say amen. Uh, Pastor Josh, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Well, I can give you the ingredients that's messing up everything. It's one little letter, I. That little ingredients that you drop in every time of I will mess up everything. But when you take I out of the equation and quit saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. And when you begin to read the word of God and say, with men all things are impossible, but with God all things are possible, you'll realize it ain't got nothing to do with you anyway. It's got everything to do with God. Somebody say amen. There's a lot of churches today that's got too many. Too many people? No. Too many singers? No. Too many preachers? No. Too many unbelievers. Got a church full of unbelievers. Come on, somebody. Oh, yes, I want everybody to come. Red, yellow, black, and white. I want the saved, the unsaved, the sinners, the saints, the rich, the poor, the sick, the well. Somebody say amen. That's proper. That's what we want. Yes, hallelujah. But when it comes to faith, that's something all different together. It's different. It's different when it comes to faith. It's different when it comes to someone praying. It's different. Listen, we're not talking about taking attendance, row. We're talking about there is an army that is against the body of Christ. There is an enemy that is raging. It's not how many we have in a Lifeline Connection class on Sunday morning. I want to see every class filled to capacity. It's not about how many we have on Wednesday night. I want to see as many as we can get in our midweek worship. We're talking about something altogether different. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about knocking the devil right in the gut. We're talking about hitting him right between the eyes. We're talking about going and defeating the Satan and his little imps from the head. We're talking about some people that will believe God and his supernatural power and say, Lord, I'm expecting that your glory is going to fall, that your power is going to come. That's what the churches today are not talking about. They want to fill the building. They want to fill the pew. I want to be filled with the glory. I want to be filled with this power. I want to be filled with the spirit. And if it only means that there's it's just me and 12 disciples then let it be I want God and more of him somebody say amen God's not looking for numbers God is looking for faith come on church most what we have today is nothing more than masses that are gathered together hallelujah hallelujah but you want to see where the glory is? And I'm not saying there's not glory. There's not power. There's not spirit in large churches. There is. Don't misunderstand that. But you go out somewhere to the back country roads and find you a little small church with about six or seven cars, about 20 or 30 people gathered in a building, an old beat-up pulpit, and an out-of-tune piano. And you watch them people begin to worship and praise God. And they're not interested in the clock. And they're not interested in the sound. And they're not interested in the cameras. Come on, somebody. Again, I'm not saying that it's wrong to have numbers. I'm not saying it's wrong to have cameras and lights and sound and all of those things. What I'm saying is those people are there because they want more of God. They want more of his spirit. They want more of his power. That's what God is looking for. Somebody that will have the faith to believe. Somebody that will have the faith to believe. Are you hearing me in this house? And if the church would have faith to believe, then we could see more of God. We could see more of his spirit. I was praying. It's been several months ago. Matter of fact, it may have been even a year or so 
go and I was praying and I said God why is it that people have just quit praying we don't hear prayer warriors praying like we used to hear them pray at the altar I said God why aren't we hearing people pray and he said it's because people have quit believing we don't believe what we pray anymore and therefore we just quit praying but if we're going to pray we're going to have to believe somebody say amen and when we pray let the church believe that God can and that God will come on are you with me in this room tonight believe for God to do more and fill you and to help you in your life I believe God somebody said well I believe God too Pastor Josh when I got money in my bank account of course you would I believe God when no pain in my body of course you will I believe God when somebody's patting me on the back. Come on, somebody. I believe God, too, when you, when you hear somebody singing your praises and tell how wonderful you are and how good you look and how precious and sweet your little devil kids are. Come on, somebody. It's easy to believe God in those moments. Having a pocket full of money don't have anything to do with believing and having faith in God. No matter how good you can sing, how good you can preach, how good you look, how wonderful your children are, I don't have anything to do with faith in God. See, real faith is tested. I'm preaching on faith in here tonight. Some of you know what I'm about to preach on. I was teaching, but now I'm preaching. To have great faith... It has to be tested greatly. Are you hearing me? In other words, things have to get rough before they can get better. I know some of you are looking at me and going, you mean that's where I've been? It sure is. If you want your faith to increase and you want your faith to grow, then your faith has to be tested. Anybody remember the story of Brother Job? Hello? Uh, Don't get me to preaching on that one. I'll never get to the sermon over. Again, let's think about Gideon. This this is the man we want to study. Somebody say amen. Amen. Test of faith. Test of faith by God to say, hey, Gideon. 32,000 is too many. 10,000 is too many. But 3,000 is too many. 300? That's plenty. Are you sure about this, God? Are you positive about this? See, again, we come back to I. We come back to we. That's our problem. And that's where most of the church is at this moment and this hour. How can I preach that? I'll tell it. We think that if we are involved, that we had something to do with what happens. That if we are in the middle of it, if I am there, it was me, it was I, it was we that saw them saved or saw them healed or saw them delivered. And we think we play some part in this. The only part you play is faith. You can't save, you can't heal, you can't bring miracles. I can't save, I can't heal, I can't bring miracles. I can dump the anointing on your head, but it can't heal, it can't save, it can't deliver. I can put a prayer cloth in every pocket you got, but it won't save, heal, and deliver. But it's the power of Almighty God and His Spirit. I got to be honest with you, I have this. I, Brother Randy, I've, I've pastored long enough now that, I, that if I hear certain sayings out of people, then all of a sudden red flags just go everywhere. Because it's like you hear it once, and then you hear it again, and then you see it tumbles to be the same. What do you mean by that? People walk through the door and they've only been here a day or two and they'll say, I'm here, Pastor Josh. I'm here forever and I'm here to help you in any way you can. A red flag goes up. Why is that? 
Because most of the time, not every time, most of the time those people come in with good intentions. But they don't, how can I say this, Lord, without hurting someone's feelings now? At some point, I'll preach something you won't like. At some point, I'll do something that you won't agree with. At some point, I'll fail you in some way or another. Of course, I want you to love me, but at some point, you've got to come to the place to where your eyes isn't on how can I help the preacher but what can I do for the kingdom? Listen, I'm glad you want to help. And I'm really thankful that there's people. And we got a lot of wonderful servants and volunteers and helpers in this church. But what we really need more than anything is for people to have faith, to believe that God can and God will. There are broken hearts and broken lives and broken marriages. There are people who need deliverance and set free. We've seen them walk through the doors of this church. We've seen what God can do. But there's hundreds of thousands if not literally millions of more. There's people right around the corner on the streets and in homes and apartments around this church that need God and his Holy Spirit. We need some believers who will pray and believe that God will get a hold of them and change their life forevermore. Come on, somebody clap your hands and say amen. My hand and your hand shouldn't have anything to do with it. Again, look at Gideon. God put Gideon and Israel in a place that they needed to see. It was God and God alone. It was not man. It was God. God is putting this church, I believe, in a place right now, in a season right now, in a generation right now that God wants us to see. We might be small in number, but we're mighty in God. And if we'll have faith to believe God and get out and self and flesh out of the way and let God work. We could see God do things that we've never seen before in this last hour we're living in. Yeah. Glory to his name. Because yeah. granted, granted tonight, when I get my Bible and hold it, we're in serious trouble. <laughs> granted tonight, the odds are against us. You hear me? The odds are against PTC. It's rare. It's unusual. A church of 64 years in existence would thrive and grow and prosper this late in life. As a matter of fact, at 64 years old, you've already established the name for yourself. Come on, somebody. At 64 years old, PTC into the community, for the most part, has already established its name. The odds are against us, church. Come on, are you with me? The odds are really against us. Because you got a young preacher preaching old-time Pentecost. <laughs> and the preacher is from his hometown. The odds are against us. Brother John, the Lord wasn't even welcomed in his hometown. The odds are against us. Well, the odds are against us because we still have organ music. Most of the church's organs are in a back closet. Amen. Can I tell you a secret? Even the First Baptist Church of Savannah, there was no organ on the platform. I nearly passed out in my seat. What Baptist church don't have a piano and an organ? Come on, somebody, help me preach in here. What are you trying to tell me? We're still traditional when it comes to who we are. I told you last week, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make you scared or fearful. I'm trying to tell you that the odds are against us. 
And to the outsiders, we are ridiculed and laughed at and persecuted. And most would say, if you're going to PTC and you're supporting that work, you're wasting your time and you're wasting your money and you might as well find somewhere else. But I've come to declare to you tonight, God has sent you here and he sent me here for such a time as this. And I've come to remind you in this room tonight that God will prove himself to be faithful to those who will be faithful unto him. That's what God was trying to teach Gideon. That's what God was trying to teach Israel. This is what God is trying to teach us tonight. We've just got to have faith. We can't be fearful. We can't be afraid. Fear is the opposite of faith. You've already heard me preach that. God can't use the fearful. Satan's biggest attack today upon the church is a fear. But the foundation of the gospel is faith in Christ. And so the reason Satan is coming against God and his word and his people is because we chose faith over fear. Somebody say amen. They said, but look at the grasshoppers in the land. Oh, but dear friend, that's fear. Look at the dead on the building. Oh, but that's that's fear. I'm telling you, faith says that God will make a way. And if it's God's will, it's God's bill. You may say tonight, but I got a bad doctor's report. Oh, but that's fear. But faith says by his stripes we are healed tonight and we shall live and we shall not die. Faith teaches us to believe God for the impossibility. Fear says that your child is lost. They're gone. They're hooked on drugs and alcohol. And their sinners going to hell. But faith says, I have a son and I have a daughter who will live again and come out of that pig pen and they'll be saved. Faith says, Satan is a liar. Faith says, I believe God. Satan wants you to run and hide in your den and cave. But I'm rising up in faith and I'm believing even for God to do the impossible. Somebody give him praise if you believe it tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It's happening right now by faith. Yes. Oh, you may be seated. I got to hurry and I got to quit. Faith. Somebody say faith. Look around you right now. Think about it in the spirit, not in the church. I'm glad some of you are at least listening. You got more people serving the devil and living in the world than you do are serving Jesus Christ. There's more enemies that are against you than there is that are for you. There's more Midianites than there is for Gideon's army. The Midianites got more weapons than the army of Israel. And they won't let them have any. It looks hopeless. It looks helpless. It looks like we ought to run and go in the other direction. But faith says no. Hmm. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God no matter what odds are against me. Are you hearing me in this room? Let me tell you something. i got to finish with this. This is vital and important on what I need to get to tonight. God doesn't hate someone because they lack faith. God doesn't despise someone because their faith is weak. God doesn't throw you out out as an outcast if your faith is not where it needs to be. But God is so wonderful in grace and mercy mm, that if we come to him God's not knocking you in the head and condemning you because you have little faith. God may say to you, oh thou of little faith, but he wants to help you to gain faith and increase in faith. Are you listening to me? If I were to be honest in this room tonight when it concerns the Christians, if I were to take a meter and say, where is your faith? And you've got to get to a certain level of faith. Probably wouldn't be many left in the room. Amen. 
Think about those 22,000 that ran because they were fearful and afraid. Some would say, well, I'm mad and angry at them. Well, who hasn't at some point in time become fearful and afraid? See, my business is not to keep up with somebody else's faith. My business is to keep up with my faith. We need people of faith. And it might be all right if 22,000 don't show up for the Sunday afternoon pickwick or the Saturday bake sale. But if you got 22,000 people in the church at 1030 Sunday morning and 22,000 don't show up, something ain't right. Where are you going with this? I'm going with there is a battle. There is a fight. And we're going to have to fight the warfares of the powers of darkness and of evil. And we're going to have to fight in these battles so that our faith can increase. I hope you're with me. The headlines in the papers say it's not good news. It's rough. Think about it. Gideon's army's lost 22,000 men and all they got's a pocket knife. Come on, somebody. 22,000 men have left. There's 10,000. And they're outnumbered and they're outgunned and they're outmanned. Isn't it easy to follow the flesh? Hello? Following God at times gets a little scary. But faith, but faith. I thought the other day, you remember, remember in the story where the Bible says that the Lord said to the devil, Have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered checking old brother Job, a man of faith, one of the greatest men of his day, believed and trusted in God, and the Lord said, mm, have you considered brother Job? Go down there and test him and try him and see if he's got the faith. And I thought the other day, oh Lord, I, I, I thought, I wonder if the Lord's ever said to Satan, have you ever considered PTC and Savannah, Tennessee? Hello? Okay, maybe there's nobody in here fighting any battles. Maybe there's nobody fighting any devil. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe the Lord just said, Lord, the devil, have you considered Pastor Josh Franks? Hello? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And when hell looks at PTC, and when hell looks at this church, and when hell looks at this pastor, and when hell looks at the ministers and the staff and the people here, we may look outgunned, outnumbered, and outmanned to take on the fiery darts of hell. But God says, go on over there and test them and see what kind of faith they have. And then here comes the devil, and he's a-knocking, and he's wanting to fight. And I thought, you know what the Lord said to Satan? And have you considered my servant Job? And then I thought in my spirit, well, here we are, and the devil comes knocking, and we open the front door. When are we going to look at the devil and say, hey, devil, have you considered we're still here? We're still home. We ain't ran. We ain't hiding. We're still singing. We're still preaching. We've walked through hell. We've walked through fire. We've been through the waters. We've swam in the rivers. 
There's been a few times we thought we were going to drown. And a few times we thought we were going to burn out. So a few times we were down. But we were never out of the fight. We're stronger than we've ever been. We have more power than we've ever had. I'm telling you, we're still worshiping the great I am in spirit and in truth. And the devil may be singing in four-part perfect harmony to us tonight that he's going to take us out. But I got news for you. We ain't quitting. We ain't giving up. We ain't backing down. And we ain't stopping the work that the Lord has begun. If Satan says it ain't, mark it down on the other side. It is. If Satan says that you're not going to make it, you are going to make it. Because the devil is a liar. If the devil says you're going to die, take it to the bank. You're going to live. Oh, Satan is a liar and the father of all lies. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a faithful God who keeps his promises. We must have faith in him and believe. And with God, it will come to pass. And we will win the battle. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet all the building. Stand to your feet all across the building. Brother Annie, come to the organ. Duranda, give me one more verse, two more verses of Scripture. Verse 21. 20, let's just go to 20 and 21. In Judges chapter 7. The three companies blew their trumpets, break the pitchers, held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands. And they cried. They shouted. They lifted up their voice and said, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And verse 21 says, And they stood every man in his place round about the camp and all and all the host, the enemy, all of the enemy ran, cried, and fled. God's not just going to take out a few of your enemies. But if you have faith to believe, and if you're going to have faith to believe, then prepare yourself for the victory that's going to come. They're all going. Hallelujah. Come on, I said they're all going. I said they're all going. Every demon and devil in the hell is going back. We serve notice tonight. We're going to win. Bless his good holy name. Give him praise in this house tonight. I got to hurry. Let me ask a question. I want you to search your heart for just about 10 seconds. How many in this room would say there's some things in your life that look impossible tonight? Some things in your life that look impossible. That's you. Raise your hand. Raise it. Raise it. Some things in your life that look impossible. I don't, it may not be big. It may be big. It doesn't matter. To, if it matters to you, it matters to the master. Somebody say amen. amen. Looks impossible. How many believe tonight, again, we serve the God that can make the impossible possible? Every enemy in your life, every distraction, everything that's against you would flee and run if you just simply had faith to believe that God can. Now, you, you sound tonight preacher like a faith preacher. I am a faith preacher. I believe in faith. Did God allow some things to happen in my life? Sure, he allows everything to happen in your life. Everything that happens in your life, God allows to happen. Good or bad. Have you considered my servant Job? God allows it to happen. But he wants to grow and increase your faith. Who will stand the battle? Who will stand the test? Who will believe me? 
for the impossible. That's what God's trying to say. The one who would be fearful shouldn't be fearful anymore. If the spirit and the power of God lives in you. You know that little song we sang, Kim G? You know that little song we sang? I know the Lord will make a way for me. Okay, we sing that, right? We sing it all the time. You already know it. But do we believe that? I know the Lord will make a way for me. Now wait, wait. You got to get these lyrics right. If I live a holy life, a separated life, not of this world, but of the word of God, and do the right, I know the Lord will make a way for me. Well, why do I know that? Because I know the Lord has laid his hand on me. He laid his hand on Gideon. He laid his hand on 300 men. He laid his hand on Brother Job, even though that Job lost all that he had. But God didn't just give Job back what he lost. He gave him back double of what he lost. I know the Lord has laid his hand on me. I love these lyrics. Here's how I know that I can have faith and believe and that God can do anything. Cause Jesus died on Calvary. I know this. He saved my soul and he set me free. He set me free from what? He set me free from the sin. He set me free from self. He set me free. I had, a, I had a picture that was full of all kinds of ugly, sinful, dirty, rotten, filthy, corrupt things. But all oh, that picture was empty. And God came in and filled me with his precious Holy Spirit and set me free from the law of sin and death. And he whom the Son set free is free indeed. For sin shall not have dominion over me tonight. For I know the Lord. Oh, has laid his hand on me. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to close with this tonight. If you have something that you would say tonight, Pastor Josh, it's impossible. I can't do it. Man can't do it. Can't fix it. Only God can. If you believe that God can, I want you to come stand along the altar. We're going to have a time of corporate prayer real quickly before we leave tonight. I want you to come right now. You sure can. Hallelujah. Here. Thank you, Jesus. I don't never talk much about this or that, but about 15 years ago, I had some retina detachments, and from that, Pastor knows headaches at least five days out of a week, six days out of the week, migraine headaches. And it's been going on, been going on, been going and on. You know, and you ask me, how you doing? I say, it's well in the Lord. Well, I hadn't had a headache in a month. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. He's a God who healeth. Come on, lift your hands right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are believing right now. We know you're going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, you're going to move. That which is impossible with man, it's possible with you. And we know right now, we know right now by faith. Come on, somebody's got to believe it. I know by faith right now, he's made a way for me. He's working it out for my good and for his glory. In the name of Jesus, I stand upon his word. I stand with the word of Almighty God. I know the Lord. I know the Lord is coming through on my behalf. He will fight the enemies. He will come against the warfares. I just stand in faith. I just stand in faith that God is doing it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for my country. 
Lord, I pray for this world. I pray for the, for the spiritual condition that our churches are in. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that there would be a revival in the church, that there may be a revival in the land. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Lord, we need to see the supernatural power, the manifestation of the Holy Ghost sweep through our land, sweep through our churches. Oh, Spirit of the living God, come once again. Move upon us. Lord, I pray for every son, for every daughter right now, every prodigal. I pray for every spouse that may be represented in this room who has a loss spouse. I pray God that you would bring them back to the fold. Bring them back to the cross. Bring them, oh God, to, they may find their place at the foot of the cross and cry out for forgiveness of their soul. Lord, we're praying right now that they would be set free. Lord, we may not see it, but Lord, I thank you for the work that you're doing in the jail ministry. I thank you, Lord, blessings upon that. Lord, what you're doing in the bus ministry, blessings upon that. Lord, in every area, whatever is happening through the work of the church and of the kingdom of God. We may not see it, but Lord, we are believing that there's going to be more. Save more. Heal more. Deliver more. Change, oh God, more in 24 in the name of Jesus. Oh, it's the sword of the Lord and of Gideon, the sword of the Lord. We stand upon thy word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise God, praise God, praise God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, I pray right now for Kim Crow's mother who had three bypasses on Monday. Lord, I pray right now that you'll heal. Lord, don't allow depression to set up. Don't let that oppressive spirit come into that hospital room. But, Lord, heal her body and get her out of that bed and raise her up that she may be whole and well in the name of Jesus. I pray for Sarah Jennings' father right now, Lord. Lord, this cancer that he's battling, I pray in the name of Jesus that he be delivered and that he be healed by the power of God, by your stripes. We are healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're believing right now, Holy Spirit. Lord, will you join with me in prayer and faith right now across this room? We're praying for our service on Sunday. Lord, on this Easter Sunday, I'm praying and I'm asking for souls to be saved, for lives to be changed. Lord, it's not about me. It's not about PTC. Lord, it's about an eternal soul. Lord, and I'm praying that the sweet spirit of God would saturate this building. Lord, send people in. But God, most of all, send lost in. In Jesus' name, draw them to the cross. Draw them to the cross. Draw them. Lord, help us as your people. Lord, not to be afraid to worship and to lift our hands and magnify. Help us Sunday, Lord. It seems it can be easily for us to be intimidated or, God, maybe get a little more reserved when there's guests or visitors. But, God, I pray that we'll have an exuberance of praise, an energy of worship. God, that you would get us up early Sunday and open our eyes and our hearts and prepare us for worship as we come to exalt the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, bless us, I pray. Give us a day that we can see the growth of the kingdom, not just the growth of people's tabernacle, even though God will pray that and we'll ask the blessing of that. But Lord, we're praying right now for the kingdom of God to grow. Salvations right now in Jesus' precious name. We believe, we believe. We believe in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's sing that chorus one more time, Brother Randy. I know the Lord. Come on, sing. Will make a way. Lift your hands for me. I know he will. Yes, he will. I know the Lord will make a way for me. Oh, yes, he 
Jesus will make make a way for me. Let's sing that other one. I like this one too. Oh, I know the Lord has laid his hand, has laid his hand. Thank you, Jesus, for me. Oh, me. I know the Lord has laid his hand. Yes, he has. Jesus died on Calvary. Hallelujah. He saved my soul and he set me free. I know the Lord has laid, laid his hand. Oh. Let's give the Lord one more hand of praise as we thank him. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Do I have any saints with faith? Do I have any saints ready to fight the battle? Well, you better be ready. Because anytime we preach on faith and try to help you to increase it, Prepare for the enemy to come. Some of you will fight him as soon as you walk out of the double doors. Some of you will fight him when you get home. I'm warning you now. You'll fight him when you get home. Not your spouse. Don't call him or her the devil. Amen. Might be sometimes. No, I'm just kidding. Prepare yourself. All right. Let's go to battle. Let's go in faith. Hold on a minute. Don't move yet. Hold on. I can't leave this building tonight without telling this. To show you how big our God is. Sunday night I was going home from church. I just had my car up shop. I started smelling gas. Well, I made it to counts and I pulled off, shut my car off, and I crawled out of it. The smell was so strong in the car, it made me deathly sick. I called my son when I got to check. One of the fuel injectors had popped out, and it was spewing gas all over my car on the motor. But when I began to smell that gas, I called on God. Amen. I says, God, you're going to have to help me. Yeah. And all I did was I kept saying, Jesus, 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 until I got where I could pull off the road. That car could have very easily. Place. But God protected me. I don't know if it was the fault of the man that worked on my car or what, but it took a lot of faith to crawl in that car tonight and come to church because fear was welling up inside me. But I know a God that would say, He took care of me and He protected me. And I thank you tonight for it. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad of that? Praise God. Turn around and love your neighbor and tell them I'll see you Sunday and your visiting guest with you in the house of the Lord. God bless you online. We love you. God bless you.